Hi everyone and welcome to the Fake Love and Flying Monkeys podcast. My name's Nova Gibson and I am your host. My area of expertise is in supporting victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse and other toxic relationships. I'm the principal counsellor at Brighter Outlook Narcissistic Abuse Counselling Service and I'm also the author of Fake Love, Understanding and Healing from Narcissistic Abuse. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about everything from the initial pink cloud you find yourself on at the start through to the horrific discard and the powerful trauma bond that keeps you hooked. So take your imaginary seat on the roller coaster that is narcissistic abuse and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode of Fake Love and Flying Monkeys. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Fake Love and Flying Monkeys. Today I'm talking about ways to shut the narcissist down, four ways in particular. And these strategies come from an acronym that we use in narcissistic abuse recovery and that acronym is JADE. You may have heard me talking about this acronym on my live streams and videos and reels that I put up. But for those of you who haven't, JADE is probably the most important acronym that you need to know if you are dealing with a narcissist. Now, everything the narcissist does and says every action behavior that they engage in is to get you to jade now jade stands for justify argue defend and explain so how do you shut the narcissist down when they're trying to get you to react because of course you're reactions are their fuel and they need your reactions to sustain that false mask that they wear. So to begin with, let's go back a little bit and talk about why the narcissist needs your reactions. So the narcissist needs narcissistic supply. That is their oxygen. Like you and I need oxygen to survive. The narcissist cannot sustain that false self, that grandiose view that they have. They cannot uh, maintain that ego that says I'm better than everyone else without narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is found in the attention that a narcissist seeks. Now, that attention can be either positive or negative. So there's this misconception, I think, that uh, most people believe that the narcissist is uh, more in search of positive uh, affirmations, people surrounding them who uh, look up to them and, and revere them. And while that's true for people outside of their closed front doors, uh, people who are not what we would call the primary sources of their narcissistic supply, uh, their attention that they seek, that narcissistic supply, I believe is just as potent when it comes in the form of negative attention, which can be, you know, uh, contempt, anger, frustration, because whether you're hating them, you're angry at them, or you're thinking they're amazing, they're still occupying space inside your head. You're still thinking about them. And if you're angry at them, then that means they're significant enough in your life for you to be giving them that attention. So that's what happens when, of course, uh, the the love bombing stage ends in an intimate relationship or you've started to realize that 
something is not quite right in this relationship and you're starting to question their actions and, and what they say. In other words, you're telling them that you can see who they really are. And of course, this is perceived as criticism. You're not believing that they are absolutely amazing. So when you are hooked in a relationship with a narcissist and they have put you on that roller coaster, which you don't even know you are dependent on and you are in hook, line and sinker, you're confused and you're forever trying to get back the person that was so kind to you at one time, when you are hooked, that is when they will start to devalue you because, of course, that is not sustainable. That person they pretend to be who makes it all about you, that is just not something that they can keep going because they're only interested in their end goal, which is to make it all about them. So it's got to come to an end. So what does any normal human being do when the person that treated them like gold, that they believe they could trust, that they could depend on, that person they believed would have their back any time they needed them and would always support them, what happens when that person suddenly does this shape shift and turns into someone they don't recognize, someone that treats them worse than any other person has ever treated them? Well, of course, any normal human being is going to react. And it's when you start to react to their confusing behavior that is at complete odds with that person that you loved, it's then that your reactions to that change in behavior will really act like the most potent source of narcissistic supply that they could ever find because they're going to then be able to uh, feed off your your joy and happiness when they provide you with the breadcrumbs of the person you're always trying to get back, the person that made you feel good, you're, you're always chasing that feeling again. They can feed off those positive fumes, but they can also feed off the negative supply that they get from your pain and your anger and frustration, etc. In other words, they will have this smorgasbord of narcissistic supply from your reactions to their confusing behavior and also to the breadcrumbs of love, in inverted commas, that they give you. And your reactions come when you jade with them. So when the narcissist begins to devalue you, you are going to react. And their gaslighting, their deflection, their blame shifting, their projection of their own horrible characteristics, behavior and traits onto you, when they are doing this, you're going to jade. You're going to justify, argue, defend, and explain. There's actually two E's. E also stands for emotions. And when you are doing this, they are baiting you into continuing to do it. Now, what happens is they get fueled up. You're arguing and and you're, you're trying to prove your point. So they're like a, a leech on a leech's host. They're soaking up 
all of the supply that's coming from your reactions and you end up feeling crazy and depleted and it also conditions you because you get so exhausted trying to explain yourself it conditions you to not try and make them accountable for anything in the future but the narcissist knows they have put a lot of work into getting you to jade at any given opportunity so let's look at a few examples of this okay let's go with justify an example might be that uh, in an intimate relationship uh, you have always been kept on a, a, a tight budget you're berated every time you use a credit card and you have to sit down and explain the, the credit card statements every time they come in and one day you're just feeling down if if you're a woman and you think oh my goodness, you know what, I need something to, to cheer me up today, so I'm going to go and get my nails done. So you do that and it feels good. You just have a, a little day of pampering and then what happens? The narcissist comes home. They don't even need to see the credit card statement because they notice that you've got a, a new set of acrylic nails perhaps and then the judgment starts. How can you go and waste money on that sort of stuff when I've told you that the business is struggling and you're there just selfishly spending money on these cosmetic things that are never going to make you look any better anyway? Uh, of course, they throw the little dig in there about your personal appearance. But basically, they tell you that you were selfish. It didn't do anything to in, improve your looks and that you did not listen to them when they are the ones that are doing such uh, an incredible job of trying to keep this family together and and keep a budget budget going and you're just out there wasting money on something as ridiculous as getting fake nails now you know that you never spend any money on yourself you buy all your clothes second hand and everyone else gets something before you do. You never have any type of luxury item in your life and you're angry, you're annoyed, especially because the narcissist has no qualms in buying a new car or a new computer or getting an upgrade on their new PlayStation whenever they feel like it. So you tell them that. You justify the expense. I believe I deserve to have a little luxury every now and then. I never spend any money on myself and I really, really am hurt that you've made such a big deal when I never ever engage in any kind of spending other than when it's on someone Else. You justify the expense. Now, of course, now you know that they're a narcissist, you're not going to get a normal reaction from this person who you have just put forth a very, very good explanation and defense to because this person doesn't care. They don't believe you deserve to have any luxury items and of course they want to control you they most probably wanted you to ask their permission to spend any money on yourself but they're more angry that you dared to stand up to them but it's a setup now don't believe for a second that the narcissist doesn't know what they're doing. So 
when they put forth their response to your justifications, they will sound very plausible. They'll sound adamant and they will have conditioned you to think that there's some validity to what they're saying. And of course, they've also conditioned you to blame yourself and for you to think that you are ungrateful and selfish. So when I say the narcissist knows what they're doing, remember there is nothing wrong with their IQ. They know that you never spend any money on yourself. They just don't care. So when they're responding, as I said, to your very, very appropriate justifications, they are chasing your reactions, which they know would be forthcoming. And your justifying yourself was exactly what they predicted. They gave you uh, a situation where you were guaranteed to react. They knew you would justify yourself. And of course, they confused you. They made you either uh, cry or get angry. Remembering negative supplies just as good as positive. They started an argument out of nothing. They got to perhaps leave and give you the silent treatment for two weeks, all because you appropriately justified what you should never have had to justify yourself for. Okay, so now let's look at A for argue. Let's make it a narcissistic parent this time. The meddling, interfering mother who is wanting to destroy your relationship, to put a wedge perhaps between you and your partner because they envy the fact maybe that you have someone who loves you and they come over to your house and they tell you that you've folded the clothes the wrong way or or how could you put those ingredients in that meal? I thought I could teach you better than that. I thought I taught you how to make a cake and here you are doing it the wrong way or you cleaned the wrong way or maybe you just looked at them in the wrong way. What your narcissistic parent knows is that there's nothing wrong with the way you're doing any of those things. Maybe they're just different to the way they do things, but they were bored, you weren't giving them enough attention, and they wanted an argument. So what happens? You you retaliate. How dare you come into my house, tell me that I can't cook and that you're the best cook in the world and that I don't keep a clean house and that I don't fold my kids' clothes the right way, and you fall right into the trap. You start arguing with them and the narcissist, especially the narcissistic parent, can use the old, you're so ungrateful. I was just, you know, trying to give you some, some tips on how to do things better after everything I've done for you. And, you know, perhaps they'll start crying. And of course, it's awful to see uh, an old person crying. So uh, you, you argue with them and then you feel the guilt that comes when you see your parent that you've been conditioned to tolerate their abuse through obligation and guilt over the course of a lifetime. You start arguing with them, but then you end up being the one to apologize because you just can't stand the silent treatment they give you or that you have got society on your back, the rest of your family on your back saying, well, you've only got one parent and you give in. Whatever the outcome is, 
you started arguing with them and they baited you into arguing with them and they soaked up your reactions that came when they engaged in that setup. Now let's look at D for defend. Let's say once again, it's a spouse or a partner and they very manipulatively over the course of the relationship have made it clear they don't like your parents or your friends because your friends and loved ones, they are rude to your partner. And here you are going out to dinner with them and you've had enough and you defend yourself. They're my family. Okay. I should be allowed to go out with my family. And it's not fair that you make out like I've got to choose between you and them. You defend the indefensible. You defend the fact that you should be able to see and spend time with the people of your choosing without having to have this conflict with your partner. Now, once again, the narcissist knows what they're doing. They know that this is a guaranteed way of getting you to react because they knew what they were doing when they were trying to isolate you from your loved ones. And they know that you are close to your family and your friends. And they know that you will go to the ends of the earth to defend them. So when they call them horrible names or they make you feel like you're betraying them because you're, you're spending time with them. It's a guaranteed way of getting you to defend yourself. And it works because you're a normal person. And it's awful when we hear someone portraying the people that we love in a negative light. The narcissist knows that that's a no-brainer if they can see that you really do have a, a loving bond with these people. They know that you have these wonderful qualities and that you will stand up for them and defend yourself. And of course, they will come back with something like uh, your friends and your loved ones treat me like dirt and, and that's okay with you. And once again, it leads them into a situation where they feel like they can punish you because you're allowing, in inverted commas, these people to uh, treat them so badly. So once again, it's a, a trap where they're guaranteed to soak up the narcissistic supply that comes from you defending yourself and your loved ones. Now, remember I said there's two E's. The first E is explain. And when they're gaslighting you, for instance, they're trying to tell you something that's the equivalent of the sky is purple. Now, you know the sky is blue and so does the narcissist. But they watch you get out the screenshots. They listen to you explain why the sky is blue. You're, you're explaining something they know and they watch the frustration in, in your face and, and they listen to the frustration in your voice when they say to you that no, you're wrong. The sky's purple and they watch you and listen to you get angry when they just won't believe you and they keep telling you over and over again that you're wrong and they soak up the supply that comes from you explaining why you're right. Now, always remember, guys, 
that narcissist already knows you're right. They just want you to go crazy while you explain while you're right because they love it when you jump up and down, so to speak, trying to explain why the sky is blue and not purple as they're suggesting. And the last one is the second E, which is emotions. Now, whilst you are justifying and arguing and defending and explaining, you're also giving them your emotions. Uh, people who have come to see me in my counseling practice will know that I always say when, especially you're dealing with uh, a, a narcissistic ex or any narcissist, really, a parent, a friend, uh, be emotionless in your response when they're attacking you because what they're after is for you to jade with them and give them your emotions. So, for instance, if you share custody with a narcissistic ex and your ex has sent you this 10-page email, which is just an assault on your character, but in there there's one line that pertains to the children, then you keep your response very, very short and emotionless because you don't want to fuel them up. You fuel them up, you reward them. And when we reward someone for behavior or their behavior, what we're saying to them is, that was really good. Can you please do that again? So if there's one line in that email and if you can answer that question that lies in that one line with one word, which is yes or no, then that's what you do. Will it drive them crazy? Absolutely. And that just proves that what they really wanted was for you to get emotional because then they know you are thinking about them and you're probably going to be thinking about them all day, if not all week. So please, if you don't remember any acronym, and there's quite a few that we use in narcissistic abuse recovery. Please remember this one, guys, Jade, J-A-D-E. Everything the narcissist does and says is to get you to Jade. They want you to justify and argue and defend and explain and get emotional. So let's look at what happens now when you stop rewarding them essentially for their behavior and you fail to fall into their trap with their manufactured conflict. So what happens? You shut them down. Now, they may not do this immediately. When they've had control over your emotions and your reactions for so long and they realize they've lost control, they're starting to lose control because you're not reacting the way you used to, they're going to be angry. They're going to be very frustrated. So most probably to begin with, they will ramp up the behavior. Okay, that didn't work. It used to work so well with her. So I'm going to up the ante now. I'm really going to step it up a notch because when I say this, I know that she's going to justify and argue and defend and explain. So expect for them to ramp it up a notch and that's when you've got to be really strong and continue to ignore them. Ignore them or give them very, very little response, emotionless response with as few words as you possibly can. Now, they may try again and again, but it's going to be a lost cause when they 
finally realize that no matter what they do, you just don't take the bait anymore. Now, the goal is to become so boring that they go somewhere else for their narcissistic supply. So we all do it, guys. We all jade. It's a normal human response. And I bet that when you look back over this relationship and you start to remember all of the times that you walked straight into the trap, I don't want you to feel guilty nor ashamed because it's a normal human response when you hear falsehoods about yourself or the people you love. It's normal to want to correct those lies and falsehoods. So now that you know when the narcissist communicates with you, if you have to have any type of uh, communication with them, keep it to a minimum and remember the JADE acronym. Watch them as or listen to them as they start to flail. They will be like a fish that's just been hauled into the boat and you see that fish flipping around on the bottom of the boat. Why? Because it's without its life-giving source and it's out of its environment. And that's what I picture a narcissist to, to be and, and to look like when you fail to react on cue. They have conditioned you for so long to jade. And sometimes it's going to be very difficult. But just remember the person you're dealing with is not a normal human being. They are wired very differently. And when they're baiting you into a reaction, at the end, they are going to be full to the brim with that ego-loving uh, narcissistic supply and you are the one who is going to feel crazy. And, of course, they love nothing better when they get you to act in that frustrated manner. They love nothing better than to then use your reactions against you to flip the script and call you the crazy one. When you stop jading with the narcissist and you are so aware of what they're doing, it is empowering, guys. You can listen, if you have to, to what they're saying, read their horrible emails and give them nothing. It's normal to want to reply to them and correct them, but it's actually going to have the opposite uh, goal to what your goal is. The end result is that you're rewarding them and you're teaching them to do it again and again. So yes, remember, don't walk into that trap and cross your legs, bite your tongue, uh, do whatever it takes to not justify and argue and defend and explain. And hopefully you will be teaching them that you are never going to be a narcissistic snack for them ever again. And if they want that kind of reaction, they're going to have to go elsewhere for it. And that brings us to the end of another Fake Love and Flying Monkeys episode. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Remember that acronym. It is so important. You want to cut them off. Cut them off at the knees from their supply so you can heal and get on with your life. Remember, when you stop rewarding them, it's not about punishment or revenge, although that will be a bonus. It's about you 
and your healing and being able to get on with your life without them uh, engaging in that behavior in the future. You want them to leave you alone. So until the next episode, guys, if you would like to have a one-on-one counseling session with me via Zoom, no matter where you are in the world, just see my website link in the description. And of course, don't forget to get your copy of my best-selling book, Fake Love, Understanding and Healing from Narcissistic Abuse. And please, the best thing you can do if you'd like to support this channel is to leave a review and a rating. And uh, if if you're looking for something else to do, there's a, a link there where you can buy me a cup of coffee. I love coffee. On that note, it's bye from me for now. Until the next episode, remember, you are worthy of love and you are worthy of so much more than a lifetime of fake love and flying monkeys.